Hey guys, in this project we're going to build a testimonial box widget. And you can see that it shows a testimonial with a user, with a progress bar, and after 10 seconds when this progress bar hits the end, it's going to go ahead and switch to the next testimonial. So basically we'll have an array in our in our JavaScript with the text, the image, or link to the image, the name, the role, and basically switch it every time that this progress bar is up, so every 10 seconds. So we'll be using set interval to do that and we'll create this animation using keyframes in the CSS. All right, so let's get to it. Okay, so we're going to get started on our testimonial box. I'm going to keep this the browser pretty wide just so we can see the whole thing at at a at a wider width. Uh, so in the HTML here, I just have a, a link to font awesome. and you can get that if you go to cdnjs.com just search for font awesome or just go to the font awesome website grab the cdn link and then let's change the title here to uh testimonial box and down here I'll get rid of this h1 so this is going to be the container so testimonial dash container oops and we want we're going to have a progress bar so I'm going to add that here so just progress dash bar nothing inside the div um that's where the animated line progress bar is going to go and then we want our quotes so I'm going to give this a class of FAS for font awesome and I want FA dash quote dash right but I'm also going to give it a, just a class of FA quote and I'm going to add that to both of them so let's copy that down and let's make this left and if i save that we're just going to see our two quotes right here so under the quotes we'll have a uh, paragraph with the class of testimonial and obviously the, this is going to be dynamic but for now i'm just going to paste in some text so you can put whatever you'd like here or you can just get the, this exact text from um, from the repository All right, and then under the paragraph we're going to have a user class which is going to have the user stuff like the image. So let's say image, I'll give this a class of user dash dash image. And for the image, I'm going to take it from https random user. So random user.me slash api slash uh portraits and let's do slash woman slash 46.jpg so it's just give us a random image of a woman and then alt I'm just going to say user all right so if i save that there we go now under the image we're going to have the user details so we'll have a class of user details and then i'll have an h4 and i'm going to give this a class of user name and we're going to say maya miles and then a paragraph with the class of role and her role is going to be marketing and that's it that's all the html so pretty simple let's jump into the style sheet here now i'm not going to use the roboto font with this so i want to get rid of everything up to uh, css and then from here we'll do question mark and set the family equal to and I'm going to use um what font am I using here Montserrat so M O N T S E R R A T and I'm just going to grab that font and put that right here for the body okay changes the font up I'm going to add a slightly uh light gray or slightly darker background color with a light gray so let's do F4 three times and display flex we want everything centered that's correct height 100 viewport heights cuz we want it centered both horizontally and vertically and then i'm just going to do padding 10 pixels just so when it's on smaller screens we have a little bit of uh, you know room on the edge here so this is the testimonial container it wraps around everything so let's style that we can actually make this smaller Yeah, so let's do the testimonial container. So for this, let's set the background color. I'm going to set it to a hexadecimal blue, which is 476 CE4. 
and we'll set the color to be white. And let's set the border radius. I want rounded corners, so I'm going to set this to let's say 15 pixels. And let's do margin 20 pixels top and bottom, auto left and right. Padding is going to be 50 top and bottom, 80. Oops, 80 left and right. And then Let's give it a max width as well. So max width I'm going to do 768. Yeah, and then I'm going to position it relative because the quotes inside I want to position those absolute because I want the quotes like one here and one here. So let's actually do that next. So we have FA dash quote is on both quotes. So I'll give those a color. I want them to be kind of transparent looking. So we'll do RGBA white. So 255 for a red, green, blue, and then 0.3 for the alpha. This gives it that transparent type look. And then font size. So let's make it bigger. Do 28 pixels. All right. And then we're going to position these to be absolute. And let's set from the top 70 pixels. So if I save that, both of them are going to be in the same exact spot. So what we'll do is we'll first grab the right quote. So F.A. quote dash right. And let's set that position from the left 40 pixels, which is going to move it over here. Now, this one I want to be on the other side. So I'll just copy this down and let's set this quote left. And we want to go from the right 40 pixels. Good. Now, if it's if the screen is smaller, like, you know, if it's around, if it's if it's under 7768, then let's remove the quotes. So what we'll do is just add a media query down here by doing at media. And inside here, we want to set the max width to 768 pixels. Meaning that these styles are only going to apply if it's under 768 pixels and we'll take the F.A. dash quote and display none. Okay, so if it's smaller than that, it's going to display none. Um, I'm also going to lessen the padding on the container if it's smaller like this. So let's take the testimonial container. And set the padding. I believe it was 50. Let's just do 20 pixels top and bottom and 30 left and right. There we go. All right, so let's move on from the quotes. We want to go back above the media query here and we have the testimonial, which is the, the paragraph. So let's say uh, testimonial. And I just want to change the line height here to 28 pixels just to spread the lines apart. And as far as the text align, let's do justify like that. Okay. now for the user section here, let's say user and I'm going to display as a flex box. And I want to center everything, so I'm going to align items. Center and also justify content center. All right. Now for the image, we have the user image. So we'll say user user image. And I want this to be circular. So I'm going to do a border radius of 50% to make it circular rounded. And let's set the height and the width to let's do 75 pixels. So that'll be the height and width. Make it a little smaller and I'm just going to set object fit to cover, which we, we actually don't need to have that, but just to make sure it covers the back, the uh, not the background image, but the the image itself and then user details. So let's say user user details. I'm just going to add margin. Uh, yeah, let's do margin left 10 pixels. So this right here, we just want some spacing in between. Um, these here are, you know, this these are pretty far apart. So the username, I believe, is an H4. 
So let's take the username and let's remove any padding from it. So I'm sorry, margin, remove any margin from it. And then for the role, let's say user role, I'm going to set the font weight. Let's make sure the font weight is set to normal and let's set margin. We'll do two pixels on the top and bottom zero on the left and right. Actually, that's kind of close together. So let's do. Uh, let's do 10. Yeah, it's fine. So the progress bar right now is just it's an empty div. That's where we're going to have the animated line. So let's style the progress bar. I'm going to give it a background of white or background color of white. And then let's give it a height of, let's say, four pixels. Okay, so now we can see the line, the width, make sure it's 100 percent. And then we're going to have an animation called grow. We haven't created it yet, but we will. It's going to take 10 seconds. Okay, so this is important because when we write our JavaScript, we want the box to change every 10 seconds as well. So we want this progress bar to take 10 seconds to grow and we want it to grow in a linear style and infinite so that it repeats and that should do it. We just need to create that animation. So let's create that in a keyframe. So we'll do keyframes and call this grow. And this is going to be pretty simple. We're just going to say at 0% we want to add a transform property and we want to scale X. So it's going horizontal. So X and set that to zero. So now if I save. Uh, that's not right. That's coming from the middle. So we can actually change that by adding a transform origin up here. So transform origin. I'm going to set that to left. There we go. So that that gives it, uh, you know, positions it differently. If we could also do right if you want it to go that way. But yeah, we're going to set that to left. So that takes 10 seconds total to get to the end here, which is what we want. So in the next video, we're going to jump into the JavaScript. And as soon as it hits the end, you can see right now it just doesn't do anything. It just starts over. We want the testimonial. We want the content to change. So we need to use JavaScript to um, to manipulate the DOM. All right. So we'll do that next. Okay, so now we want to start the JavaScript for this project right now when this progress bar hits the end, it just starts over and nothing changes. It's not dynamic. So that's where JavaScript comes in. So let's start off by just grabbing everything we need. We want the testimonials uh, testimonials container. So I'm just going to use document dot query selector and we have a class of testimonials container. So we'll grab that. Um, let's grab the testimonial itself, which is the text. So we want the class of testimonial like that and then we want the image. So we'll call this user image and that has a class of user dash image and we also want the user name. So that has a class of username because this is all stuff that we need to swap out. So username and then finally we want the role. So class of role. And let's change that to role. All right. So we're grabbing everything that we need from the DOM. Let's actually just make this a little bigger. Okay. so once we do that, we need to have our testimonial stored somewhere. Now we're just going to have them right in an array. So let's call this uh, testimonials. We don't have. Yeah, so we don't have a testimonials up here. I call the testimonials container. So this is just going to be an array which I'm going to grab and paste in. Now, ultimately, you could have this stuff coming from a database. You could just make a, you know, a simple fetch request if you had some kind of back end API that served this JSON data. But for us, we're just going to have it right in here. And I mean, that might be something you, you want to move on and, and do yourself. 
in, in a lot of these projects, I would suggest trying to add on to them, make them better, make them your own. So we have these testimonials. I'm going to define a variable for our index and that's going to start at one. And then what, what we'll do is create a function to update the testimonial, because that's what we want to do essentially is we want to update this data, this text, the user, the image and so on. Uh, so what we'll do here is get from so we have this testimonials array and we can access if we have like, you know, testimonials one. I'm just going to console log this for now and go down here and I'm just going to call update testimonial. And if we go over here and we check out our console, you can see we have an object with June Cha. So if we go up here. You'll see June Cha is the second one. All right, because arrays are zero based. So we have June Cha. Um, and obviously, if we put like two, we're going to get the next user, which is this Ida Nis Niskanen. I don't know. Florin chooses some weird names. So that's testimonials two, which is the third position. So what I want to do is just pass in here the index. And I want to take from that. I'm going to use just destructuring to pull out the, the fields because I don't want to have to say testimonials dot index dot, um, you know, dot name or, or whatever. Uh, so we have these fields here, name, position, photo and text. So what I'll do is say const and then with some curly brackets here, I want to pull from that item. I want to pull the name, the position the photo and the text from whatever the current testimonial is using this index. And then let's take testimonial. So testimonial is going to be the paragraph that I brought in up above. So bring that in and I'm going to set the inner HTML equal to the text of the current testimonial. OK, and then we're going to take the image so what did I call that? So user image, we want to set that. So let's say user image and we want to set the source. So we're going to say user image source equals the photo that we pull from the current testimonial. Then we want to take the username and we want to set that in our HTML. And we're going to set that to whatever the name is of the current testimonial. And then finally, the role. Whoops the role, set the inner HTML and we're going to set that to the position. So the role is the same as the position. Um, the username is the same as the name. We just use different classes in the in the HTML. So now after we do that, after we set all that, we want to take that current index and increment it by one. So just index plus plus. Now, if we get to the end, we want to start over. We want to go back to the first testimonial. So let's create an if statement here and let's say if the if the index is greater than the testimonials dot length. So the entire length of the array. And I believe we have seven of these total seven testimonials. So the last one is going to be the sixth position. So we want to say testimonials length minus one. If index is greater than that, then we're just going to set index to zero. And I'm setting index to one initially up here because the first one is already in the HTML here. OK, so that's going to show first. And then as soon as the 10 seconds pass, when that progress bar is up, we want to call update testimonial. So back in the JavaScript, we have the function call right here. But what we want to do is pass this into a set interval because we want this to be called every 10 seconds. So set interval takes in a function, which in this case is going to be our update testimonial and then the amount of milliseconds that we want to call this. So 10,000 milliseconds, which is going to be 10 seconds. And it's very important that this matches uh, this right here. So if you want this to be shorter, if you want it to be five seconds, just change this to five seconds, change this to five thousand. OK, so let's save that. Let's see what happens. So as soon as this hits the end, it should 
all this content should change. Okay, there we go. So now you can see the text changed, the user image, the user name, and the role have all changed because we assign them to whatever the current index is. And you could do things like change the, the background color or something like that as well. Um, and like I said, you could pull this data instead of having just a static array, you could pull it from a database or to pull it from some kind of API. So there's a lot you could do here. This is basically just the, you know, the front facing user interface. But uh, but that's going to be it for now, guys. Hopefully you, you enjoyed this project and I'll see you in the next one.